told you I'd be back. <laughs> I want to tell you uh, something about this song that... Uh, thank you. ...that we're going to do now. It's... Uh, I told you in the beginning that I think music needs to tell a story. And the sometimes it's just an idea, it's a concept, and then other times it becomes a, compl a complex narrative. So this, the, the idea behind this composition is found in the name Los Bladder, which means loose or flying leaves. Uh, but there's a problem here. The music in the middle just doesn't sound like anything that's airborne. It's very grounded. And so Julia and I, we talked over a period of a couple of months, I would say. And together we came up with an idea that would fit the music. So you would know what she is depicting in her head while she's playing. So because some of the music sounds like it's exaggerated merrymaking, uh, we decided that the leaves were not just loose in the wind going nowhere, but they were actually, by invitation, they were going to a carnival. <laughs> so we changed the name of the composition from Los Bladder, or the Loose Winds, or the Flying Leaves, to the Carnival of the Leaves. Now, we decided that the site of the carnival was a woodland clearing near a bubbling brook, and the brook is important. So, following the sound of merrymaking and feasting, there is a pompous section where the rhythm becomes quite odd, and it's like someone trying to march, but who is incapable of keeping an even beat, almost like thuds created by hopping? Ah, that's when it came to us. We decided that this was a festival celebrating a wedding. Now, once we got the wedding idea, it wasn't too long before we got the rest of it. This is a wedding of a very serious and pompous frog <laughs> who arrives to his wedding in a very dignified but hopping manner, which the music will artfully depict. Now, the frog's melodic theme that you will hear remains the same, but it becomes much more refined when the frog's bride arrives, because she arrives on a lily pad, and she is being pulled up the brook, the babbling brook, by white doves. And then after the ceremony and the celebration, you hear the leaves begin to swirl and become airborne one more time. And they're off to another rendezvous in some other place known only to them, the mm -hmm. Carnival of Leaves. Mm -hmm.
dog's okay. wedding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, this next composition, I can get my cheat notes out here. Uh, this is a fantasy intermezzo, which means it's a suite of music that tells a story in multiple scenes. Now, not only do I want to tell you the story, and I'm going to put my glasses on. I got a lot to read here. Uh, so when you hear the entire suite played, you will be able to match the music with the themes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start the story, and then I'll pause, and Julia will give you a little tiny, a couple measures, so when you get to, when you hear the whole suite as a whole, you'll be able to identify what is happening in the story. Okay, so here we go. One spring morning, 13-year-old Sandra and her 16-year-old brother Andrew took the family sailboat for an outing on the lake near their home. And without warning, a violent storm with heavy rain, lightning and thunder descended out of the north, tossing the little boat violently about in the wind and choppy water. As they struggled to keep the sailboat from capsizing, they saw a wooded island nearby. They made a dash for the island, pulling the sailboat as far up the sandy beach as they could. And then they ran to the woods to get out of the rain. They walked deep into the woods. It was a very strange place. The trees were tall and so dense that the rain no longer reached them. mist began to, that, oh, it smelled like a million flowers that began to swirl about their feet. And ahead of them, a light appeared. In the center of the light was a door. It was standing all by itself without any visible support. Sandra was scared and held her brother's hand very tight. Well, Andrew was scared too, but he sure didn't want his sister to know. The closer they came to the door, the brighter the light came. Then the door swung open. And they felt drawn to the opening in spite of their fear. They stepped through the door. And on the other side of the door was a breathtakingly beautiful meadow. The grass was so green it looked like a field of emeralds. And the sky was vivid turquoise blue. There were flowers of every conceivable color poking through the grass. Butterflies darted among the blossoms, and they could hear the buzz of honeybees. A dragonfly darted toward them and stopped, hovered in midair. He looked at them, then darted away. He stopped, turned, and hovered as though he was waiting for something. Sandra and Andrew just gawked. The dragonfly flew back to the teens. Unbelievably, they heard the dragonfly speak. Come on, you two, follow me. And they did. The dragonfly led them to a path next to a little river that meandered through the meadow like a silver necklace. There were animals everywhere. They saw zebra, a gazelle, tigers, even a giraffe. Some were contentedly grazing, others were gambling playfully together. They saw a couple of young bucks with a big rack of antlers, playfully crashing their heads into each other, each trying to do out the other one, but they bounded away as the teens approached. As Sandra and Andrew moved on, they saw a peacock fanning his plumage and conceitedly strutting on the path in front of them. In the trees around the meadow, monkeys 
chattered and played tag, swinging from tree to tree. The brilliantly colored bird soared through the sky, and at the far end of the meadow was a mountain peak from which a beautiful waterfall cascaded. A rainbow shimmered in the water at, at the bottom of the waterfall. Now she gets it. <laughs> the end of the meadow, another door appeared. As they approached it, it swung open. The dragonfly was waiting for them at the open door. He said, thank you for coming to my world. Be safe. And they stepped to the door and it closed behind them. They found themselves on the beach. In front of them was their sailboat. The storm was over and the lake was calm. Sandra and Andrew pushed the sailboat into the water and jumped into the boat. And once the sail caught the breeze, they turned back to bid the strange island goodbye. But when they looked, there was nothing there. <laughs> Thank you.